Hi and welcome to Themico. In this video, we will look at what is the purpose of constraints in a rigid body and what kind of constraints are developed by different supports. We will also discuss what is meant when it's said that the body is redundantly constrained. Let's get started. First things first, why do we need the body to have proper constraints? Well, the purpose of the constraints in the body is to ensure that the equilibrium of the body is fulfilled. Where do the constraints then come from? The answer is quite simple. The constraints are formed by the supports which support the body. For example, if the support prevents translational displacement, which is caused by an external force from happening in a specific direction, then this support creates a counterforce in the body. Depending on the type of support, the support can also prevent rotational displacement from happening. In addition to the counterforce, it also develops a counter moment in the body. There are different types of supports where each creates corresponding constraints. Let's go through the most typical ones which we will encounter in this course now. I believe that all of you have seen a cable at least once in your life. If so, you know that the cable creates a reaction force which is acting away from the member in the direction of the cable. Therefore, the cable has one unknown support reaction which constrains the body. Let's move on to the roller support. The roller has one unknown support reaction force which is perpendicular to the surface at the point of contact. This means that the roller can prevent translational displacement from happening in the vertical direction, but not in the horizontal direction. The roller support also does not prevent rotational displacement from happening. Okay, let's talk now about the single pin support and its support reactions. The single smooth pin has five unknown support reactions. What could these five reactions be? Well, Three of the support reactions are unknown reaction forces which prevent translational displacement in all directions and two of them are couple moment components which are usually acting on the y and z axis. Therefore, this kind of support does not usually prevent rotational displacement from happening along the x axis. A final typical support in this course is the fixed support. The fixed support is a special kind of support because it can prevent all displacements from happening. This means that the fixed support will provide six unknown support reactions in total for us. A typical example of this type of support is a welded joint between two bodies. Some of you may be thinking, is that it? Are these all the support types that exist? Shouldn't there be more? And you're right, there are many more. For example, there is also a ball and socket type of support which prevents all the translational displacements from happening. However, these are not as important to know in this course as the supports which were presented with more depth. You'll probably get familiar with other types of supports in more advanced courses. And now, for the final topic of this video that we are going to discuss, and which is also a very important concept to grasp, think about the following question. What would happen if there are more support reactions than are necessary to ensure the equilibrium of a rigid body? The body would have redundant constraints and it would become statically indeterminate. Some of you may be thinking what this actually means. Well, it means that the static problem cannot be solved easily by analytical means because there are more unknown support reactions in the body than equations of equilibrium available for solving the problem. There is a way to handle this situation, but it is presented in more advanced courses like strength of materials and we are not going to deal with it in this course. You should, however, be familiar with this concept if you decide to continue your future studies. Hopefully, after watching this video, you know how and why constraints are formed in a rigid body, and you are also familiar with the most typical supports and their support reactions, at least related to this course. You also know the concept of redundancy, which is useful to know if you continue on to further studies. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.